Yes. Uh, so Sana, let's start off uh, with what actually got you interested in the world of finances as well as fashion because normally people kind of tend to go either way. So what made you, you know, interested in both these worlds? So I think um, when I started, I started off just with fashion. There's this concept of aptitude versus interest. So I did have the aptitude and interest for fashion. Uh, and I think with finances, it kind of comes with time. When you start doing something, you start, you know, earning. Let's say you have pocket money coming in every month. And then when I was in college, I was given a fixed pocket money and to save it and then to, you know, spend it very wisely to use cashback, reward websites. So all of this was kind of how it all started. Um, and then I realized that when you start earning, there's a lot more that you can do with that money because obviously the amount increases. It's not just a pocket money after that. And um, slowly and gradually, I started learning more about you know how you can invest and how you can different types of schemes and different types of shares and bonds and all of that. So that was that side of uh, you know obviously fashion was there, but then buying stuff, buying clothes out of because everybody buys clothes with money. So saving money to buy more clothes, that's where the seed was planted. But then later it grew a lot more. So I would say uh, it was a mix of that. Okay. So uh, when did you decide to become a content creator? Also, if you can tell us a little bit about your journey to, you know, uh, going up to 400 plus followers on 400,000 uh, plus followers on YouTube, as well as 130,000 plus followers on Instagram. So I started uh, right after school ended. I actually wanted to start way back, I think in eighth grade, because I was watching a lot of international YouTubers. Um, they were making such good videos and I was like, nobody in India was doing it at the time, you know. So I was like, why not start? But then in school, you know, when you're still studying, I had my 10th and my 12th board exams to give. So I was like, if my interest goes here and if I just in case I, I don't score well, teachers are going to bash me, you know, friends are going to judge. And there's all that kind of like judgment attached to it, you know, in school, especially in like the fashion side of things, because it's not typically a very academic profession. So I didn't start in school and then tried before my last board exam. I was done with accountancy, that was the subject I hated the most. And I was done with that, right? Next day I started, uh, I filmed my first video, which was DIY face packs and posted that. I was still left with a few exams to give, but I was like, I'm just doing it. And then I couldn't care less about my exams at that point. So posted the first video right after boards ended. And uh, from there, I've just been posting constantly every single week. So that was in 2017. Now we're in 2023 and it's just been going on and on and on. That's great to hear. So uh, let like tell us a little bit about like how, you know, your journey has been till the, you know, followers when you started getting followers and then it grew and grew and grew. So if you can tell me a little bit of a journey. Yeah. So um, the first few videos, of course, experimentation, you see what's working and what's not working. And slowly and gradually, you figure out which videos are getting the most hits, which videos people are loving and, you know, which ones aren't performing as well. So you build a strategy. Every creator has a strategy of their own, depending on what's working for their channel. So for me, it was a lot of haul videos that did very well. Affordable, you know, Indian wear hauls, Western wear hauls, college um, outfits that people could wear. Because I was myself in college, so I think that relatability factor also came in. Um, and slowly and gradually when I learned that okay fashion is really working for me because when I started I was doing skincare, beauty as in makeup and fashion everything but then I figured okay fashion videos are actually uh, you know people are liking those videos they're wanting to watch those that's when I started doing more of those and that became like a regular strategy then and then slowly it was time to kind of expand the team so I got some interns on board really really creative interns and they helped uh, you know they helped obviously um, take the game up in terms of set design production value so it all started from there and then the videographer freelance videographer and photographer so it was kind of slowly building the team then and um i still i'm so proud to say that i still work with the same set of people i started with they have grown a lot now i have seen my journey you know come so far so everything has just been documented on youtube very nicely that way uh, then i went for masters recently last year last to last year and even all of that has been documented so it's just been like a like you know like a digital book where i keep everything and people just have been following along that journey 
and then when it comes to brand collaborations they started coming in slowly so i uh, started working with an agency and uh, they helped me get more collaborations and manage the you know business side of things while i was managing the creative side of things myself um and of course building community was always uh, the goal so even now if you scroll through the comments of say youtube any kind of youtube video you pick up on my channel uh, people are just so connected and that's the that's the aim right every creator wants that eventually so i think that we've done very well so i just hope it keeps on growing yeah so um since you have built up like a quite a bit of presence on uh, youtube as well as uh, instagram we would like to know like did you feel like a youtube audience was different from an instagram audience and how does that play out really as for youtube audience i think because they've seen you since the beginning they're more attached to your journey uh and especially because youtube is long form so uh, i mean you know you can post like longer duration videos even like 30 minutes 40 minutes as much as you want so when somebody when the viewer sees you express and explain so much throughout the day and then over months and years you know they a part of your journey so they feel more connected to you um and as i said like you know i started in 2017 so that was when i graduated from high school then i did my bachelor's and my masters and now i'm working so my youtube audience you know the first subscriber for example has seen me throughout these years compared to instagram where content is short form it's more of photos and shorter videos so yes of course you know i think instagram is more focused on aesthetics and visuals rather than the connect that people have with the audience uh that they have with the creator So yeah I mean Instagram and also people because if one reel goes viral people will come they'll connect you know they'll follow you on Instagram but that kind of long term connect that they have with the the creator that is sometimes missing so for visuals it's great for aesthetics it's great but uh, for like the community part of it I think YouTube will always be like my little baby great <laughs> right. uh so for all those since you have said that you know uh, starting off with you know uh right after school you kind of you know got into this whole uh, you know being a content creator uh, kind of a thing so uh, starting with you know your interest in fashion then it grew to finance and everything so for all of those up and coming you know millennial as well as gen z fashion designers who want to make a mark in this world uh, still haven't been able to but they are kind of looking to do that uh, how how useful is instagram because you know uh, we get uh, like e-commerce stores and everything uh, are there but then you know you also can sell stuff on instagram very uh, easily now so how accessible has instagram uh, made business for them I think definitely a very very accessible uh recently I've been collaborating with so many Indian wear brands on Instagram and it's it's basically a, for a brand it's very important to obviously establish social media presence a website is important you know your uh, your it, customer service is important but equally it's I mean it's important to establish a good marketing plan as well and social media really comes in handy for that um so if as long as you especially for influencer marketing i would think it's really important because if you connect if a brand connects with the right creator who is able to drive uh, you know sales for the brand that that's i guess the goal for every brand so identifying those creators you know uh, talking to them whether they're working on barter or working through a paid collaboration just finding the right creator and even themselves also posting good creative content with reels and with youtube shorts it's become so easy because you use some nice audio that's trending and you know it will the discovery at least is not an issue that's something that people that brands don't have to worry about discovery will happen Uh, as long as your product is good um, and you know you if you're working with influencers you're choosing the right people you don't have to worry about you know getting eyeballs on your product that's going to happen so the focus can be on other aspects of the business so definitely it's 100 100% important to have a good social media presence cool so um so most of the brands nowadays are embracing you know uh inclusivity uh, and when i mean inclusivity i mean body positivity or uh, you know uh, equal skin tone or you know uh, size and shape everything so uh, 
do you think like the fashion industry is do has done enough by now uh, for in terms of inclusivity or does it still have ways to go when it comes to you know uh, being more inclusive towards uh, catering to every kind of customer i think it's it's doing its bit but there's a long way that we still have to go um there's this concept called fat tax which is basically for you know you see a lot of brides um, anybody who's slightly who's not basically you know doesn't fall into the small or medium range um the category in the size chart there'll be additional uh, amount that they'll have to pay to be able to get that garment because more cloth will go into more like fabric and production cost will increase so a lot of designers are still doing that and i mean when when you when you see runway shows and all you will see great models plus size models um being a part of the same designers but when you actually go to buy it there's still fat tags that charged um and that doesn't really add up you know so of course we've come a long way but this is also it's becoming slightly like a it's it's kind of like a trend i feel at this point you know a lot of brands are doing this so seeing them a lot of other brands also want to join the bandwagon but they don't really believe in the concept it's more like okay it's happening today and tomorrow this trend kind of fades away people stop talking about this so we'll stop doing this or we'll start charging again for you know if for more uh, for like like larger size of garment so i just hope this doesn't it doesn't come and go it doesn't doesn't become like a fading trend it's here to stay and more brands actually you know what they're showing on the runway they actually adopt those practices in the longer run even in like everyday life when they're selling to their regular customers so uh, in short like you're saying that uh, you know brands are embracing inclusivity like most uh, i'm pretty sure there are some brands who are doing it you know uh, on a genuine basis but you're saying that more brands are actually doing it out of fear that they won't be accepted in the market or something like that yeah they're doing it out of that and on the public front yes of course you know you see a lot that's that's what i'm saying when you see runway shows you see a lot of fashion shows there are a lot of brands who will show plus size models but when and this was i i was reading an article the other day when actual brides go to buy those you know lehengas or uh, suits and they pay the design i mean when the bill comes to to them they see that additional pricing has been charged and in informal terms that's known as fat tax so just because you know that's how, that it's just not a fair practice because if you're promoting inclusivity why are you charging extra for that so i think we've still got a long way to go of course a lot of brands are genuinely also doing this they're genuinely promoting this uh, concept and they care about you know um, inclusivity for all but a lot of brands i just hope that for them it doesn't become like a passing trend and it's here to stay so uh lastly we would like to ask you about obviously your uh, upcoming book which is glow up guide uh, elegantly sipping your way to success uh, i must say it's a very interesting name for sure so what can our readers expect out of the book so the glow up guide is like a royal invitation to a complete transformation that's how i like to put it it's uh, i've got a copyright over here so as you can see on the cover it's got a lot of things you know it's got uh, a lot of fashion uh, typical fashion stuff you've got shoes and uh, lipsticks and you so basically it's got a lot to do with self care but it's also got a lot to do with you know stuff like stuff that will holistically transform the reader for example um fine dining or you know handling uncomfortable questions it's basically a book on it's it's a transformatory book so it's it's not just limited because when we think about a glow up we usually think about a physical glow up right you um, do your makeup and you wear good clothes and you you've transformed but in the long run a glow up is like a holistic glow up a glow up it can't just be just looking good you also have to feel good your your mental state has to be good socially you should know what to do and a lot of very complex uh, topics you know that we think are really complex but they're actually not that difficult for example fine dining i used to think it's a very complex thing but when i went to finishing school last year um they taught us the basics they taught us in, in the most simplest terms they kind of broke it down for us and now i feel so confident doing it so i just feel like you need one good mentor to be able to tell you how to conduct yourself and just it kind of breaks because when you google it it gets so overwhelming the, there's so much information out there 
but one good mentor will be able to tell you exactly what to do and you don't need too much information to overwhelm yourself or drown yourself in that so this book it's a it's a light read it's a handy read it's about 178 pages also got a lot of illustrations inside so it's interesting to read that way and the tone is also very casual it's informal it's not like a typical you know booky book it's it's just it's meant to be so that young girls and boys can connect with it a lot and topics that we find somewhere you know there um like we we don't really know what exactly to do in certain situations like for example hosting good parties we can all host parties but how do you host better parties and it's a lot to do with also etiquette how do you conduct yourself finely in a nice manner in front of others what things should you say what things should you not say networking um expressing condolences for example always a topic that's very sensitive and nobody knows the right thing to do you know so just things like that that it's basically every girl's guide every guy also but mostly girl's guide just to have it in their bags they can carry it with them and it can be their personal like fairy godmother okay uh, so to finish off with just i'd like to ask this one last question is that what's next for sana grower like where do you see yourself in like doing what's the next big project coming up in your you know uh, life and just if you could tell tell us a little bit Sure. As if now, my entire heart and soul is into the promotion of the Glow Up Guide because I really want almost everybody to read this book. Everybody who's following me, um, just because there's so much like knowledge broken down here in a very nice way. So of course, right now my heart and soul is into that. In the future, of course, uh, in the works, we have a clothing line that I'm really planning on starting. Um, this is probably the first time I'm mentioning that, but uh, it is it is in the works. and of course youtube and instagram they're growing as they are and just a lot of interesting content coming up there as well